in private equity, real estate, venture capital, and hedge funds. And my co-moderator today is Sonia Mahanti, Regional Director of LaToken. And our honorable guests today include Christian Kumar, Managing Director of Capital Kinetics Limited, Real Estate Venture Capital, uh, Paul, CMO of Atato, and Anup Jain, Managing Director of Aureus Venture Partners. And uh, we also have participants on the project side to, for pitch competition, including Carl Van, CEO and founder of A Bit of Property, and Chris Lu, advisory board member at CSE Technology. So I'm passing the floor to Sonia Mahanti for a brief introduction of uh, uh, questions today for the panel discussion. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Myself, Sunny Mohanty. I'm the Regional Director of La Token. I'm based here in Singapore. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you today to yet another episode of La Token's VCTV. We would start the panel with the keynote speakers, um, and the topic of the discussion would be around investments. So what kind of investments are uh, currently being done in the field, especially during the time of pandemic? Um, I would like to start the floor by our first speaker, Christian Kumar. Wow, hi. Hi, Christian. So Christian, by the way of introduction, a, a little short introduction about Christian before I pass the floor to him. He is a managing director of Capital Kinetics Limited. He has a career spanning over 30 years in corporate finance, investment banking, and wealth management. Christian has created a deployment model that allows rapid commercialization of ideas, a method of valuation and funding to motivate the stakeholders. So what do you, Christian? Uh, so what, what are your thoughts about the laws of investments during this time and beyond the pandemic? Well, I think if we go back to all the recessionary periods of history, um, there's always been a huge build program shortly thereafter. And, and with this pandemic, you know, early on, we knew that this wasn't a, a V type of return. We knew that this was going to have a, a major impact on the global economy, not a regional economy and not a particular sector. So very quickly, we started looking at the immediate needs. So the immediate target investees that were looking at COVID tracking, uh, remote diagnostics, um, reducing the frequency of visits to a healthcare facility so we could get the pandemic under control. And to that end, our Monmouthshire MedTech Fund started looking in and calling into companies that had technologies that were related. But going forward, I think the, the strategy for all of us has to change. And it certainly changed for me in so much as where we were previously very much focused on things like fintech, construction as main staples of investments. We started looking at alternative investment classes. So all of a sudden, medtech is on the forefront, uh, mainly in diagnostics, but then also widening that scope to look at things like alternative medications and, and, and focusing a lot of our effort in future proofing as you know, pandemics like this going forward. The other area where we've seen a lot of change is fintech. You know, we've seen that fintech probably has been a market leader for investors for the past four, five, six years. And very quickly, I, I've seen a couple of reports and certainly in my own inquiry base, I'm starting to see that the appetite for fintech investments is starting to reduce. You know, it's partly because there's an oversaturation of what I call peer-to-peer -peer platforms there's, you know, you look at the world of blockchain, I think a lot of the major solutions that blockchain has benefited have been built. And, and, and I see a tapering off of fintech. But where I see a parallel increase in, in sectors is AI. So artificial intelligence, not just in financial services, in med tech, in transportation, in energy, is starting to become a very, very strong uh, investment class all on its own. And, and to that end, we've, um, we've made a significant investment in a global consultancy that does blockchain and AI, and we're opening up them a, a European presence. So these are some of the changes that I've seen. And, and certainly we've had to adapt and modify our investment criteria. So the first thing we did was making sure the investments that we have were stable. We had to redeploy capital to make sure they, stable, they stayed stable during this, um, this pandemic. 
And now very quickly, we have shifted our effort in looking for opportunities. And the opportunities are no longer in Wales or in London or in the UK. The opportunities now are global. So I've been speaking at events in uh, uh, Warsaw with Sunny last week. Right. He's been teaching at uh, some of the university's innovation labs in Malta, Italy. And, and we're looking to really globally scale where the talent is found. Right. And, uh, and certainly, you know, um, events like this uh, bring the global community closer. Sorry if I've overrun on time. I, I can get on the soapbox and go for hours. No, 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 absolutely, Christian. You're bang on on time. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, for those insights. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, we'd come back to you with more questions. For now, I'd like to move on to our next keynote speaker, um, Anup Jain, who is a managing partner at uh, Orius Venture Partners. Anup has been, um, he focuses on investments at the farming sectors of fintech, B2B marketplaces, um, social commerce, edtech, and health tech. Um, so Anup, we would like to go next with you uh, with the same question. Because your um, focus is on India, so we'd like to know what kind of investments are getting done in India currently in terms of VC investments. Thank you. So hi, Sari. Thank you so much for inviting me over here. Um, I'm also sort of, you know, agree with uh, Christian that uh, FinTech, uh, you know, uh, excitement has come down a little, uh, especially in the lending, uh, uh, in the lending space. We are seeing uh, investors get circumspect about uh, collections and really observing the uh, quality of their portfolios, the loan books, et cetera. So uh, I think that space is seeing a little bit of a, uh, a slowdown, if I would call it, uh, but it's likely to pick up again in maybe a year's time. And I think the general view for investors is that what's good for now, let's do that. And the changed world order, which has happened due to the pandemic, has brought a lot of things to the forefront. And uh, if you just step back, I mean, all of us here in the panel and probably all the audience, this is one big event that has affected everyone equally all around the world. So travel has stopped. Uh, kids are in front of the screen uh, doing online learning. Uh, we're all you know, sort of consuming everything literally uh, online and we are in front of the screen all the time, whether it's personal uh, events, you know, birthdays are being done on Zoom calls and so are professional meetings as well. Uh, so uh, we are, um, I think the investments that are getting favor now, and in fact, the investing community is bullish on them, is pure online businesses where you consume everything end to end online. So yeah. what could be these businesses? These, these are obviously education. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made over there. Uh, digital health, digital care. I think everyone's uh, sort of looking at boosting their immunity. Uh, um, you know, every now and then we think about, hey, what can I do to improve my health? And, and stay away from you know, uh, illness or, or sickness, as we may call it, because this, this incident has brought everything to the fore. Uh, certainly in the area of uh, gaming and entertainment, um, everything is moved indoors, everything is moved in the palm of the hand. So uh, we are looking at uh, investing in uh, over the top uh, you know, entertainment, uh, gaming's taken off. We saw that happening in China as well, uh, post the pandemic. So we're seeing exactly the same thing happen over here as well. Uh, so these are some of the themes that are emerging uh, of pure online consumption businesses, uh, which is coming up. Uh, SaaS businesses, I must, I must tell you that there has been a change in mindset for small and medium businesses. Earlier in Asia and in India, uh, small businesses were quite hesitant to pay for services, but now everyone sees technology as a productivity tool and, uh, uh, and, and people are ready to pay for services. So I think if you've got a great product, which can bring about productivity in the operations. Uh, I think that's going to be lapped up for investment. Uh, but yes, it's opening up now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anup. Thanks for those insights. Really appreciate that. Good to know about fintech investments. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's move on to our next speaker who, who may not be an investor, but he works very closely with enterprises in the blockchain space. So we have next uh, Maxime Paul, who is a CMO of a tattoo. Uh, so basically a little bit of introduction about uh, Maxime. Max, after 11 years of managing Bangkok's largest tuna trading house, he started a tattoo, the first large scale consumer, good traceable on the blockchain technology. 
a very interesting space um, in terms of food traceability. Um, we'd like to hear more uh, from you, uh, Max, today. And um, we see a lovely background, the stormy and rainy background over there. Yeah, over to you, Max. Sure, thanks, uh, thanks a lot uh, for the introduction. Yeah, just, just to confirm the background about me, uh, yeah. It's, it's not Bangkok, uh, I'm on holidays, but uh, I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, just to explain you a bit of background, as you mentioned, I was the managing director of a large food train company for 10 years. And when I saw the potential of a smart contract and blockchain uh, with my partner, we founded Atato back in 2017. And uh, our job at Atato is that we are a system integrator. We develop blockchain platform for enterprises. So I'm not an investor, but actually we are working with customers uh, in the energy, in the finance industry, in the supply chain industry, uh, both uh, publicly listed companies and startups and medium sized companies. So we have kind of a broad uh, uh, view on what's going on in the blockchain space and uh, what's, what happened during this pandemic and uh, what is the future. Um, for us, we have been quite lucky. Our customers uh, actually are looking forward and uh, they have been investing in the space even during the pandemic, uh, both on the startup side and on the large uh, company side. There is, uh, there is something that after COVID-19, those companies are actually focusing on return on investment quickly. Uh, if you invest in blockchain, it's not for the next three, four years. It's actually to have return on investment for the next year. So uh, this is what we focus at at Atato, to bring return of investment to those companies very quickly. And uh, I think blockchain, we focus on the technology, not on the crypto space. And uh, we have seen some use cases which are actually bringing this return on investment to those companies, especially in the finance industry. So um, yeah, I can not give you my uh, my view on investments, but really on about the use cases and how enterprises are using blockchains, why they keep investing in this space. And uh, one very important thing is about regulation. In Thailand, we are, we are quite lucky because we have a clear uh, regulation framework since 2018, and it helps a lot about large company to invest in the space. So uh, we'd be very happy to share about this today and uh, welcome any questions about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Max. Thank you for your insights. Um, really uh, good to hear those insights from you. So now we would like to uh, host the pitch competition. So we have two speakers, Carl Vaughn from um, Bit of Property and we have Leo from CSC Technology. So this session is going to be moderated by Nadia, my co-moderator, and we would have the uh, speakers uh, who are going to uh, obviously judge these two uh, uh, projects and give their feedback later on. Over to you, Nadia, for moderating the session. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Carl, are you ready? So, um, yes, I'm ready. Start with a brief introduction. You can introduce yourself and the company, and then share your pitch deck with the slides. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Um, so, my name is Carl, and I'm the CEO and founder of Bit of Property. Um, I'm from Tallinn, Estonia. I'm, I'm currently actually in Tallinn. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we've been running the, I've been running this company since me 2017 and the roots actually go back to Singapore. We are a Singapore based company now operating in, in, in Estonia. So um, yeah, I think with, without much further ado, would like to like go ahead and then talk, talk, tell you more about the, our, our venture. Uh, let yeah, sure. thank you so much, Carl. So you can just share uh, your pitch deck with the screen sharing mode. Yep. And you have five minutes to go. Okay. Can everybody see it? Yes. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, Bitter Property is a real estate investment platform uh, which enables people to uh, buy and sell shares in existing assets and earn rental income on a monthly basis. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we're tackling three challenges here that there are none or very few equity investment options for um, um, properties that provide stable returns. Investment in real estate uh, requires a lot of capital and usually you're stuck in for decades or at least for years uh, when it comes to investing in properties. Um, so what we've done is that to build out a platform that helps investors easily to diversify their portfolio by investing in different assets that they prefer. Um, they can start from 50 euros or less, depends on what the market gives you. 
Um, every month, they receive rental income to their account, which they can use to reinvest or, or um, use for personal expenses and uh, exit their investment whenever they wish by selling their shares to the other investors on the marketplace. So you can think of it as a stock exchange, but for properties. Um, so yeah, the two key values that our investors see is one is stability, having those monthly rental incomes coming in. And the other is diversification, as we are not saying that it is the best place where you should put the money, but it should be something that you should have in your portfolio next to Bitcoin and maybe other you know, asset classes. Um, we have already uh, some traction as well. So um, we have more than 400,000 investment volume on the platform, um, the weekly retention rate about 3.71%, and we have more than doubled our user base uh, or active investor base in the last 12 months. Um, we're running currently two products, uh, the platform for investor, which is already up and running, and the property owner platform as well, where companies can use the platform as a tool um, to manage uh, their investor base, list their assets up as well. So this is currently in, in development, um, and then we're coming out with this quite soon. Um, we are to now uh, make the connection with the blockchain as well. I've been always been interested in, in blockchain, and, and, uh, but we see in our company, we see blockchain as a sort of like a supporting tool. We haven't yet found a very good sort of like approach or use case for this. Nevertheless, we are tokenizing the assets and uh, doing essentially like an internal research to see where this could be applied when we go further. Um, so yeah, at the moment, momentum in real estate crowdfunding sector is growing. Uh, however, for sure, the uh, uh, pandemic recently now has brought uh, many of the companies to, to their knees as well. And, and, and uh, many, many of them are actually struggling. But um, uh, at least just before the crisis, uh, we were actually, the sector itself was growing like 18.5% um, compounding, compounding annual growth rate. Um, we are, revenue model is quite straightforward. On the platform investor side, uh, we earn 1% from AUM and 1% uh, from the uh, sell commission when they're uh, selling their shares on the marketplace. And for property owner, uh, we're charging actually 99 euros a month, starting from 99 euros a month and then building our pricing uh, depend on, depends on the features that they wish to have in their tools. And also um, a small percentage from uh, when they're raising money using our platform. Uh, we're a team of four people, um, actually five people, sorry, and uh, from four different nationalities, Estonia, Brazil, Iran, and South Africa. And um, uh, yeah, covering all the aspects that we currently need to um, make this platform a, a successful one. Uh, we have some early backers as well. As I mentioned, we are from Singapore. So we we're uh, initially funded by uh, Space Ventures, um, a Singapore VC. And we have a strategic investor, Lifeful, who, who is the biggest real estate investment, real estate portal in Japan. And uh, I think now one of the biggest real estate data aggregators in the world. Um, so they are more on the strategic side, um, but they're also working uh, quite strongly with, with the tokenization as well and testing it in Japan. And uh, we just recently signed an MOU with Change, uh, one, um, a novel um, investment pack. Uh, and uh, with them, we are uh, looking to test our product as well with more crypto minded investors, as they are currently focusing on, on uh, cr um, crypto trading. So we are looking to list our assets on their platform as well and see what uh, the use case there could be and if there is any interest at all. And uh, at the moment, yeah, we are also raising some uh, funding. Uh, we're looking for 150,000 euros. And with this, we're looking to get to a revenue of 44,000 euro and onboard seven companies as clients. So thank you very much. Really looking forward to the questions and discussions uh, afterwards. Thank you so much, Carl. And uh, our next speaker is Chris Lu. Yeah, Chris from CSC Technology. Yes, hello, Chris. Sorry, I was on mute. Is yeah. everybody able to hear me? Yes, perfectly. So um, could you start with a brief introduction of yourself and uh, 
a full screen sharing of your fish deck. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, just the full screen if possible. Okay, perfect. Um, a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, I'm originally from Southeast Asia in Vietnam, but um, I grew up stateside since I was four years old. Uh, my background has always been in technology. Um, about 12 years ago, I came to Thailand uh, to do my MBA. I'm not quite sure what led me here to, uh, to Thailand, um, but as the past one and a half to two years, um, I've been predominantly based out of uh, Bangkok, uh, Singapore, and also uh, Vietnam. So the, the venture that we're, we've started over here is an organization uh, foundation called CSE 3.0. Uh, CSE was born out of Singapore. Um, it's a ground from the built up for a blockchain protocol of our own. And unlike many of the uh, alternative uh, blockchain companies in 2016, 2017, where a lot of it was based on speculation, um, we, we took a, a different approach to it. Um, some of the areas that we really focused on was the, the, the hard growth uh, from the standpoint that we wanted to utilize blockchain for many different uh, multi-sectors, such as agriculture, such as education, such as healthcare. Um, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. And you can see from the standpoint, um, let's see. This bar is blocking my view, so I can't navigate. No, to move the bar. Okay, got it. So, as you can see right here, our our CSE token um, was pretty much flatlined uh, as we ran the project from July of 2019 all the way until uh, the announcement of this year, where we partnered up with one of the largest uh, family conglomerates here in Bangkok, um, which is in their predominant background was in precious metal mining, such as gold, and we have one of the largest uh, gold refining uh, factories here in all of Southeast Asia. So when we partnered it with them and the chairman, um, you can see the spike in the growth and it's held pretty well all the way up into the, for the last um, uh, four to five months. So nothing has dropped by, and we worked with, uh, uh, extremely uh, efficiently. So an area that we really focused on is really what we call our open frontier education. It's an online um, blockchain uh, uh, academy. So we've already signed up with 10 universities uh, in the College of Agriculture and Technology from Singbury to uh, Fetchabury to um, all these areas that you may not know, uh, but it's a national school system that really focuses on the agricultural space of it. Many of the times uh, with Thailand, the, the highest GDP is really the export of agriculture. And why we wanna go ahead and focus on this from the standpoint is we wanna go ahead and tokenize the futures of these particular growth. So I'm not going to be speaking on the technical side, but on the business value side and what this really means for uh, areas of blockchain, how we can actually apply it to real world cases. Uh, with COVID right now, uh, with this pandemic, some of the things that we're experiencing is unprecedented. We haven't seen this level of nature where um, people have been laid off in, in jobs. They've lost uh, their security. Everybody's dipping into their savings. An area that we really want to focus on really is to drive the youth generation back into the agricultural space. It was almost like 10, 15 years ago when um, nobody wanted to go out and grow up uh, in the youth sector to become a cook or a chef. But now you see all these Michelin uh, stars, um, uh, chefs that are appearing up with new fusion style. So taking the same concept and uh, utilizing blockchain, utilizing IoT uh, sensors to go ahead and measure the luminosity and measure the, uh, the pH or the acidity of the soil and the environment variable, uh, the wind condition, everything else from the human, uh, from the barometer side uh, and taking all that knowledge and really putting into what we have right here, um, you can see is our big data, um, aggregating all that data and really uh, allowing us to go ahead and make smarter decisions. And at the end of the day, uh, at the end of every single harvest season, uh, we become much smarter and much leaner. Uh, we've seen uh, our acceleration grow, uh, go from not a 2x multiple or 3x multiple, but 5 to 6x multiple. And so when these students are coming into these particular uh, online educational form, we're driving initially uh, into Thailand from the standpoint that it's a showcase, a showcase piece. So from a blockchain perspective, um, this is where you've seen the IBM use cases from the standpoint of the mango, uh, from a food traceability, from a food security, from everything else. And because COVID has impacted us at such an enormous uh, growth, 
uh, an area really the focus is really it's it, we focus on the Western society too much on the the aftermath, right? Uh, instead of using an antibiotic side, we we apply uh, the laws of nature and utilizing probiotic from the very beginning. So what we put into our body is what's going to keep us healthy. It's not taking the drugs. It's not taking the, the pharmaceutical uh, 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 chemical that is being produced for us for us to go ahead and stay healthy. So if we inject uh, very clean food into our system, if we're able to go ahead and uh, make sure that our cows are being fed correctly, our pigs are being you know, fed correctly, uh, the vegetables that are uh, growing in the grounds, um, they don't have any chemicals such as your nitrogen, your potassium, your phosphorus, uh, your MPK, that's always being laced. So real, really the pandemic with COVID right now and how it, this is really being impacted, it's really the, the food side of things. And utilizing Open Frontier Education, we can deliver this online model, not only in Thailand, but from a global side. And with the areas of like OTOC um, and how we are able to go ahead and use uh, facial recognition within some of our uh, software design, uh, we're able to go ahead and make sure that the student is really um, able to go ahead and comprehend the course. Why is a pass failure uh, on this particular uh, uh, lecture it, uh, more uh, pr uh, conclusive than another one? So we have uh, facial recognition. We have all the types of things that are built into the software to avoid anybody from cheating the system to go ahead and granting it. And um, we're logging us continuously on our Explorer. Um, so another area is really the um, our OPEI. Everything travels through our system from a CSE side. OPEI is pegged to the Singaporean dollar. So it's really a stable unit of uh, currency. From a digital currency side, um, we're able to go ahead and take the, uh, the, the payment of transaction. Whether we, we start from the seed to the, uh, to the de uh, diner table, uh, the sales cycle of it, everything is uh, through our OPEI system. So we, um, and you know there's stability. But the CSE, system, you see the volatility from there from an investment point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let my one of my partners speak about a CSE staking and uh, introduce that. So, Don, you want to come over here? Don? Yes, Hi, Don. We can't hear you. Hi, Don. How are you? We can't hear you, Don. Uh, probably you need headset. Um, Headset, yeah. Okay, do you hear me better? Yes, yeah, much better. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Okay, let me introduce uh, myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Don. I'm the uh, one of the uh, board advisor member for the company called uh, SRI, Soul Reserve Investment. We are the uh, fund management company in Singapore. So the project of CSE that has been um, interested us because of their ecosystem. So as you can see that um, Leo already explained to you uh, what is our ultimate goal regarding the open frontier education. And we do have the, um, you know, develop a, um, uh, what is called the support application uh, for that ultimate goal. Okay, so basically that because of the COVID situation, uh, but, uh, we have uh, that vision about like four or five years ago already, but because of the COVID, uh, people tendency right now to look and join us, um, uh, you know, uh, during this time, our member has been increased about like three, uh, about three millions of members so far. Okay, as you can see the map that we are uh, targeting the old Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, when you look at the map, our total location that has been increased. Right now, currently we have about um, three millions uh, of uh, location. Okay, it's like a hotspot. Okay, so basically the community, our member, we can be connected. Use this free Wi-Fi network so they can be able to connecting to the um, um, the Open Frontier Education platform. And also we have also developed the um, the iCareBase. The iCareBase is the platform for the health prevention. 
Uh, this program already launches about two years ago, okay, before the COVID happened. So right now, uh, because of COVID, people start to, um, to uh, get uh, more attention to this. And last week, we have launched the first um, medical car, okay, which is the online medical car, which protected under the blockchain technology. So basically, everybody going to have their own healthcare uh, history record. And uh, they be able, and the only one to asset to that. So we we build in the blockchain technology on this um, use case also. So very successful last week. Um, on the future, in the next three weeks from now, we're gonna launch another program called the CSC Staking. Um, with the CSC application and development of technology, we're gonna build a um, platform. Uh, that we can helping the startups. Okay, it's like a crowdfunding, but this is for you know um, for all the startup company or project. They be able to join us, and we're gonna support them using our platform so we can raise more fund and uh, you know whatever the budgets for the startups. So I will introduce to you. Uh, I think after three weeks from now, I'm gonna get it going, and we probably gonna have more detailed information that we introduce to all of us okay on the panels today okay so um because the time is uh, very short so i'm gonna have uh, more information about you i'm gonna send you the um the more of our material via your emails or maybe you can visit our websites um so we can um you know um be able to direct uh, the right group uh, for your any concern okay and we're looking forward for your support and your advisory because the, the idea is okay we're gonna supporting you know the um, um the blockchain community especially that currently that i and leo going to work with with the support of uh sony we're gonna support the woman uh tech group also as well um so because we have the multiple location of our um, it development team so I will introduce you as well, you know, after this uh, conversation. Okay. So um, that's it for me, uh, for introduction. Um, so more detail, I'm more than happy to share with you on this. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for that. Because I know I've been working very closely with uh, Don uh, on this project. And the CSC token is also listed, going to be listed on for, um, LA Token Exchange. So thank you for this presentation, um, John. Um, yeah, we would now move on to uh, the speakers uh, to give their feedback uh, on both the projects and ask any questions um, they would like to have now. Thank you. Um, we'd like to start with uh, Christian. Christian, would you like to ask any questions? I think, Don, you can sorry. close the presentation. Now. Yeah, sorry about that. My first question to Carl. Um, your, the, is there, what's the regulatory implication of unitizing that property? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I've got several, I've got a couple of questions. Um, okay. so that's the first one. The second, sorry, is uh, are you able to put different geographic locations onto the platform? So is it a property in, you know, Singapore versus London versus France? Mm -hmm. because, and, you know, and does that then make the exchange global? So that was my two-part question. Sorry for hogging the time. Okay. Um, so uh, both are actually uh, legal questions. So um, first is uh, uh, like, what is the legal structure behind it essentially? Yeah. So um, in Estonia, uh, we don't have uh, crowdfunding regulated. Uh, we have a voluntary uh, sort of like a good practice of crowdfunding, uh, which we are currently in the middle of obtaining as well, sort of like a good practice certificate. Uh, this is based on the upcoming uh, uh, pan-European um, crowdfunding regulation, uh, which I think is still two years um, until, we, until we get this. So up until then, uh, the situation is in the crowdfunding space is still quite uh, messy in that sense. Uh, however, the reason why we're actually in, in Estonia uh, was actually the, the, uh, the regu regulatory side, um, as in Singapore, our business would require CMS license, yeah. uh, which uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of capital. Um, hence, the go-to market here was just faster. 
However, this has brought um, sort of like the side effects to this, as uh, there have been a couple of platforms based in Estonia, registered in Estonia, but not actually Estonian um, uh, residents. Uh, they have scammed actually users and or investors and uh, taken away a lot of money, uh, which sort of like builds into the uh, trust um, or like actually takes away the trust in this area. But we're getting there. Uh, we're uh, finally like the local uh, local uh, authorities are already looking into this, and and uh, we are slowly progressing towards getting uh, this area to get uh, covered by the some regulation or license as well. Um, so 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 that's on one side. And regarding the the other question, which is actually now close uh, linked to the legal side, is the structure. Uh, we are using the common um, SPV structure. Yeah. So each property is under a, under a separate SPV. Um, in Estonia, it's it's relatively easy. I mean, it takes only one day and costs 190 euros. Very efficient. Even the bank account opens up in one day, so you can do everything in, in, in like very fast. Um, when we are looking to go to another countries to make it more global, in that sense, um, we would need to uh, partner up with the local. A real estate companies actually as real estate is very localized business and you really need to know what is going on in in, in, in a given city in a given street even more specifically right so when going to another country we can still use the spv structure however uh, we would need to partner up with a local company to really make sure that we're getting a good deal on the platform but is there any restrictions on for example if i had a half a dozen properties in london you putting that on your Estonian platform for investors to have the returns? Um, in theory, it or like it sounds like this, and it uh, looks quite simple. But on the structure side, we would need to do uh, still uh, need to make some changes there, as an individual uh, himself or herself cannot put a property on the platform, as uh, we do not have any control over it. And by control, we mean that we do not. Uh, currently, as all the properties are under bit of property, we can control uh, who is managing it, what is the tenant situation, is the rent coming in correctly. But if it would be an individual only, then um, you know there might be you know bad people who actually sell the in a way the shares to smaller investors, take the money and go away, or don't pay the rent on time. So there there can be so many administrative or op op uh, operational problems. Uh, so we do need to change the structure um, um, of the asset to put it on the platform. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why Estonia is being taken advantage of. <laughs> yes. So I, I am an e-resident of Estonia. Oh. Well. <laughs> so, um, and it makes it very easy for me being in London to set up an Estonian company, be a part of their regulation. Yeah. But um, I've heard of your business before. Carl, I, and I don't remember where. Okay. Uh, some of the same questions I had a while ago, and, and I'm glad you're moving forward with it because I think it's a great idea. I absolutely think it's a great idea to be able to unitize property investment mm -hmm. and to be able to bring in a global set of investors into an asset class. Um, now, I do agree with you also that it needs some form of framework regulation, some form of payment sureties. Um, and, you know, I'd be more than happy to have a chat with you about that offline. But, um, yeah, well done. I, I, I like the project. That's last of my question. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. Actually, Christian, we met uh, Carl at um, the World competition, the judging session that we had. That's what it was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I really found the project very interesting. So I just yeah. invited him. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anup would like to know your um, uh, feedback on both the projects. Sorry, Christian, you know, I forgot about CSC technology. Sorry, could you just give oh, me feedback on the CSC as well? Yeah, so CSC, I mean, this is just a little bit of advice. Um, as I said at the outset in my introduction, um, sort of blockchain fintech wasn't my strength. But what we, what we do know is when companies are presenting or pitching, we've broken it down into four main segments, which is one is the need in the marketplace, your approach to addressing that need, the benefit to the stakeholders and the competitive landscape. And one of the things I, I didn't feel was I didn't feel you got 
those four points addressed and um, what was the ask from the panel. So um, I'm, I'm hoping to talk to Sunny a little bit later on about potentially giving companies the ability to go through a pitch course or to learn how to pitch, especially in the early stages. Because unlike when you're pitching to a VC or a PE house, you've got analysts that sit there and help you shape, guide, and modify. When you're at the angel round of raising money, you're talking to people like me, Anoop, the guys that physically write the check. So that money that goes into your company is coming out of my bank account. So we have a very different approach and a different view on how we need to be addressed. And it's something that, you know, if you need some support, happy to talk to you about. Um, but I don't have any specific questions at the moment regarding the business. Okay, thank you, Christian. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, next, we'd like to move to Anup, please. Uh, would you like to start with either of the projects with your feedback and, yeah. Sure, thanks, Sunny. And uh, uh, some great presentations. Uh, thank you. I'll first start off with uh, with property with Carl. Um, so Carl, uh, look, the... Um, concept of fractional ownership of uh, real estate assets, uh, I think that's a fantastic one. And uh, if you're exploring that on a global scale, um, that, that's really something which is very attractive um, and will of course attract a lot of attention. My um, sort of question to you was, uh, now this can be done by multiple platforms. So do you bring some kind of, um, some kind of a moat uh, which investors look forward to in terms of uh, curating the quality of the underlying assets, right? Are you, are you passing them through some algorithm, giving them a five-star rating or a four-star rating uh, based on you know, the yields or what they have done in the past? Some way to, uh, you know, for the investors to be able to essentially uh, evaluate the returns and the risk uh, associated with that investment. Uh, I, I somehow didn't get, catch that in the presentation, but maybe you have it. So. Uh, that's one question I'd like to direct to you. So we'd love to hear about that. Okay. So uh, currently, um, uh, the properties that we have on the platform have uh, been going through our sort of like uh, due diligence phase, right? So we've done the, the legal due diligence, the uh, financial due diligence, um, or financial projections. And uh, lastly, the uh, sort of like the um, technical uh, due diligence as well to make sure that the asset itself, it's... it's uh, it's uh, you know well maintained. Um, so when it comes to giving information to the investors, um, everything can be found for each project separately on the platform. Uh, we're trying to be as objective as we can. We do not at the moment have this sort of like a rating system. I think which you're referring to, yeah, that uh, like uh, maybe a five star rating or whatever. So we don't yet have that. Uh, we have been thinking about it, um, at, but at the same time looking at from the product development point of view, uh, we currently do have some more high priority things that we need to uh, work on before we can get into this. And we haven't had uh, um, sort of like a feedback from our investors uh, up until now that this is something that they're uh, really looking to have. So we have it in the product backlog, but we haven't yet uh, started working on this. Um, when it comes to um, if at some point we were to actually uh, sort of like this platform as a tool, which I also told you about, um, if we were to open it up so that companies themselves can list the assets up and uh, real estate agencies, for example, uh, for, for investment purposes, then we definitely should uh, go, think about more um, um, in depth uh, regarding the rating system, as then we are getting projects actually from uh, many different places. And we, we would need more quick and fast way to um, evaluate them um, and, and give like an easy way for um, uh, retail investors to get a sense of what is actually going on as they are, if they're placing 50 euros or even a thousand euros, they're not going really into the depths of what they're investing into. Probably they're doing like high level, uh, want to do more like a high level overview, get them high level overview and then make their um, make their bets in, in that sense, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I understand that. I mean, everything can't be sort of uh, present on the product in the first uh, stage itself. But as long as you got it in the roadmap, I think that uh, uh, that serves very well. And I presume that you would look at uh, automating most of the processes around the documentation and the diligence 
so that it goes extremely fast and is able to list itself on the platform because that'll uh, ensure that your platform really scales up in terms of supply. Uh, I mean, not on the capital side, but on the uh, on the real estate side, yeah, on the asset side. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's correct. So uh, as we are a marketplace, so we have the chicken and egg situation. So, but need to fix the supply first, and this is the thing that we're working on at the moment to streamline this and then work on the on on the in, on the investor side essentially. Yeah, you're correct. Perfect. Sounds very interesting. Thanks, Carl. Uh, would love to um, you know sort of uh, know more uh, uh, offline. Yeah. Right. And moving on to um, um, Leo and Dan CSE. Uh, so um, uh, I pretty much had the uh, sort of similar comment uh, as Christian. I kind of thought that I missed some parts of it and I couldn't fully understand. Um, because if you were uh, going to be uh, having an underlying assets in the agri business side, that's, that's fantastic. That sounds very interesting. But I'd love to know more. And I was kind of, um, kind of half empty on that that what is it, what is the underlying asset on the platform? Uh, how are you listing it? Uh, what are the different facets being uh, revealed to the investors so that they feel like, uh, you know, purchasing on the platform or starting to trade tomorrow, et cetera. So I think uh, I'd love to know more about that. No, I appreciate the comments back from the both of you um, on the panel. Um, our goal today was really in, in, to introduce um, the projects that we're actually working on. The CSE staking is more so from the investor side that we will go ahead and present in about 30 days from now. Um, so a lot of what we're trying to apply is our protocol onto these agricultural businesses. So from an educational side, um, we're, we're trying to go ahead and uh, tokenize the, the projects that are either the, the nursery or from the farm or uh, contract farming. So from the standpoint that a lot of the farmers, um, are, they, they don't have the ability to go ahead and raise the capital on the land from that side. So we're here to go ahead and tokenize them into the project similar to what middle property is doing. And so from the harvest time, uh, it's either a three or four X multiple, we can go ahead and share the dividends from there. Um, a lot of our, our projects are internally funded because um, many of our backers are uh, investors from Vietnam. Um, it, it's one of the, which um, I apologize, uh, we're trying to wrap everything into uh, 10 minutes, but um, it's difficult because we're working on so many different areas of the aspect of the, the ecosystem. So that's why I, uh, I think like from the future, I'd love to go ahead and take on, um, uh, if we were to go ahead and pitch this in a, a concise scenario within 10 minutes, so I'm, I'm open for that as well. Thank you, Leo, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Anup. Thanks for those questions, really um, uh, interesting. Um, uh, I'd like to move on to Max. Max, uh, because you work with so many enterprises, um, so I would like to know if you have any questions on the underlying technology or anything related to blockchain technology in, in, in specific, um, please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, first, uh, thank you very much for all of you for your presentation. And uh, I'm quite familiar with actually Carl's uh, business and uh, it's something which has been actually quite popular here in Thailand for some companies to try to do so. Um, it was really related to regulation. Uh, it's a very fundamental part. And um, my question was about two things. Uh, I understand that your business is the same kind as what the Fundament Group is doing in Germany. And um, just how do you deal in this early stage about, uh, well, liquidity? I think it's going to be one of uh, the difficulty for the people who own your tokens. And uh, yeah, how do you deal with that so far? And after, we'll have some questions for uh, for Leo after that. Mm -hmm. uh, liquidity, you mean on the marketplace, yeah? Yes, correct, because um, if people uh, want to trade their token. Yeah, so uh, liquidity is something which yeah, in early stage, it's, it's a difficult thing. Uh, in our case, uh, what we've seen is that the initial price at which we list the, uh, the piece of, of or the share of the property to the platform, it's uh, 50 euros. And whenever the price drops, when it goes 49, 48, someone really wants to sell the shares, right? Then usually these shares are taken, you know, in a matter of day or a couple of days max. So okay. uh, people can actually choose their, themselves at which price point they want to sell it at. And I think for already now, uh, most of them have understood that whenever the price drops, then they can actually uh, exit their investment quite fast. Um, however, we do have, um, I mean, as 
in order to make it even more sort of like liquid and more efficient, the marketplace, uh, uh, this highly depends on the demand side, right? So that to get more investors to the platform. And this is why we're actually introducing the collaboration with the, with a company called Change as well um, as uh, their uh, monthly um, in, uh, volumes are, are about like 10 million plus euros. So we could actually be exposed to um, so like significant, significantly more um, um, of this um, investment volume and then increase the liquidity at the same time. Okay, um, thanks a lot for your reply, Anna. Yeah, I share what Christian said at the beginning about different uh, localizations. It's all about regulations. Uh, um, yeah, that's the main struggle for the business, but I think it's going to evolve that. Thanks a lot for your reply. And um, yeah, my, my questions to uh, to Leo and um, um, I think, let, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood that you are building another blockchain. And uh, my question would be why? I mean, as a software company, we build solution for enterprises and uh, the only metrics that we are looking at which platform to build on is the number of developers and the number, the number of open software that are available. Uh, that's why most of the software, the, the enterprises uh, platform that we build are the, on the Ethereum technology because there is more than 1 million developers, uh, companies building software everywhere. So I was wondering how do you deal with that? And uh, if I understand right, if it was another blockchain. And just to finish on the, my second question, so if you can reply to both, would be interesting. I'm very familiar with the agriculture business in Thailand. And uh, if you wish to tokenize uh, projects uh, about uh, that, you will need to um, comply with the Thailand regulation for tokenization and uh, raising some assets. So how do you deal with that? Thanks. Uh, the uh, the question you mentioned about the platform, uh, I don't know that you We can't you hear you. Know. We can't hear you, Leo, sir. We can't hear you, Don. Okay. Hello? Hold on yes. a second. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay, very good. Okay, I think I'm going to answer the first question. Um, the uh, The platform that we try to build is we want to... Um, utilize the blockchain technology so we can build a digitalization asset, um, you know, uh, platform. So basically, we we go into tokenize um, all the uh, you know tangible asset and including intangible assets. Okay, that's the whole idea. And uh, we start with something that be simple enough so everybody can understand, which is we start from our culture. Okay, so our culture is very simple. Okay, the tangible assets is land, manpower, okay, the harvest, okay, and the marketplace. Okay, so from there we can do derivative, okay, asset if we want to, or if they're ready, of course, we're going to comply with all the regulations, okay, in the, you know, the local uh, laws or, or government requires. Um, that's it, the whole idea. And we do have about five. Um, at least five right now, uh, assets that we go into tokenization through our digital assets, okay? So basically our service to, we will provide to the clients, to our members that we're gonna help them to the uh, securitize and basically, and then we turn into, we uh, certified it, okay, by the third party. And then after that, we can help them to tokenize those assets, okay? The way we do this, because we're gonna, find the way that we're going to raise the fund, the budget for the most effective uh, way. If a uh, normal uh, enterprise or startup, if they want to get in the fund, okay, from the traditional way of crowdfunding or financing from the bank, I think gonna, gonna, it's not gonna, gonna be not a really effective for them because the interest rate and the time uh, consume is so much, okay? But the way we do, um, you know, we're gonna help them a lot. Besides, we are also very keen to invest into the sector such as agriculture, re renewable energy, education, healthcare. And most of all is we want to reserve, okay? The, um, you know, the, the, the resource. So balancing the resource that we have right now, I think that we have a lot of waste, okay? Basically, the technology of Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, they consume so much of energy. 
So that's why CSC 30 technology come in because we're gonna save a lot of energy for that as well, okay? That, that's why when you see our use case uh, application, we target on saving the resource, okay? Basically, we're giving people the free Wi-Fi, okay? And most people asking us why we giving uh, the free Wi-Fi, where's the money coming from? So basically that is from our, advertisers, our advertisement revenue. We, we uh, from advertisement revenue, we give out to our investor about 30% of that. Remaining seven percent, okay, forty percent, we're gonna earmark to education. Uh, the leftovers, thirty percent, we're gonna earmark to all the uh, open Wi-Fi operation. That you know, one of the project that we break it down that that way. So that similar idea we're gonna apply to agriculture, okay, basically. So the harvest that we go into tokenize, we're gonna have a commitment from the marketplace already. So that's the whole idea of that. Um, regarding your second question, I think I'm gonna give it to Leo uh, because he's um, he um, he very familiar with agriculture. And since you in Bangkok, uh, Thailand, I, I think that is a very good chance that we're gonna meet and we'll discuss a little bit more how to get it done. Um, like Leo mentioned, that we have about ten university of of Thailand, government have been endorsed our program already. But again, we need more, you know. Um, talents and uh, basically we need the means that people gonna join and supporting us okay to bring you know the community closer okay so the second question i'm gonna give it to leo to answer for you yeah uh, i think we can't Sorry, hear I cannot you. Hear anything. yeah we can't hear you leo i don't think you can. can you hear me now Yes. Yes. Okay. How about now? Okay. Yeah. Able to hear me? It's fine. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Right. Yeah, yes. So I um, appreciate uh, the, the question, Max. Um, we work very closely with the Department of Agriculture. Um, as of yesterday, I was actually in the office with the Ministry of Industry and also the Agriculture as well. Uh, from a regulatory enforcement and all the acts that are we really have to be in very compliance and that's really where blockchain comes in is uh, from a traceability to security to everything that is being logged um, we're giving them open access uh, to the the, uh, the whole supply chain so from uh, from the returns of the marketplace that's what Don was building and with his team over at CSC is that we ensure that many of the, the harvests that are uh, being put into the grounds um, they are going to go ahead and translate to a, an, an open market in the sales side. So a lot of the, that's why we're also focusing on an area of the academia. Um, we're backed by academia research. We have faculty, we have uh, students to go ahead and learn this particular craft. Uh, what, what's really uh, impactful in this is because, uh, for instance, uh, there is one university that is applying uh, 4,000 rye to certain projects for us for us to go, uh, grow sustainable uh, crops, such as your rice, your potato bowl. But uh, another area where we want to go ahead and, uh, and increase the yield is um, really uh, the earnings for the farmers, um, where we go ahead and uh, teach them how to grow certain cash crops, which has a, a, a producer's market that allows, them, uh, allows us to go and export it outside of Thailand to our neighboring countries in Vietnam or Laos or Singapore, where there's very little land. So from that particular standpoint, uh, we have to understand not only the, the agricultural laws within Thailand, but within Southeast Asia as well. And we work with the top level uh, from the DOA to the, the Ministry of uh, Industry Trades as well. Uh, so that way we, we ensure that all international standards are adhered to. Great. All right, now, then, thanks a lot for your reply. I'm, I'm not sure I got everything but um, just just a couple of comments uh, and first of course i would be very happy to meet you uh, uh, we run the enterprise blockchain uh, community here in thailand uh, every month so uh, you would be welcome to join um Thank you. two things um first thing is that um i think you if you want to tokenize raise funds even if you work with the ministry you will have to deal with the thailand sec and the regulation uh, you know, there have been some laws for the tokenization of assets, uh, uh, fundraising through the ICO portals. And um, anyway, I will be very happy to talk with you guys uh, one day in Bangkok. Thank you. Thank you. Great. 
you. So th thank you, thank you, Max, and thank you, um, team of CSC. That's the whole idea of, of this platform to connect people even after this session. So before we close, because we've just closed to the uh, closing time, I just have a question for Christian and Anup. What investments have you done recently and which sector? Uh, Christian, uh, I would like to start with you. What investments have you done recently? Which sector and probably what's the ticket size if you could yeah, disclose? so um, the, the first one is, is if, funnily enough, it's an Indian company that uh, we're re relocating their technology. It's in pharmaceutical robotics. So, and wow. it packs medication and then RFID stamps the pill packs to give transparency across um, the supply chain, it, all the way from the drug company to the patient. Um, that's a company that's relocating to Wales. We've organized a clinical study. Ticket size is two million pounds. Wow, amazing. The, yeah, the second one is a smaller company from the Czech Republic. Okay. It's, uh, it's again, it's back in care, but it's more a digital platform mm -hmm. for communication for uh, the elderly to communicate with carers. Okay. And, and that ticket size is 150,000. So as you can see, wow. the range of investments we make are from the very small to a medium size. Um, there are several in our supply chain at the moment right. because we think that investments are reasonably well priced, should we say, in the current market. And one is around construction. So it's, it's, it's rapid deployment of housing and then building social housing bonds around that. So that's that's kind of where we are at the moment. Amazing. I really like that. So I know you've got a Christian who's invested in the company in India because you cover India. Your portfolio of investments lies within India. So yeah, we'd like to know what investments have you done recently? Um, yeah, and, and probably the ticket size if you could disclose. Sure, I'll do that. Christian, congratulations, first of all. I know which company you're talking about, so it's a good company. <laughs> <laughs> Small world, huh? <laughs> small world, absolutely small world anyway. So uh, so we made a very diverse investments in the last, uh, I would say, six months. And why I take six months is because uh, I think things went slow for a while. I think all of us know about that, right? So um, uh, we've also made, uh, you know, different size investments ranging from uh, 500K to a million, million, million dollars. And uh, our different investments, uh, we've done one in retail tech, which is around... Uh, digitizing the uh, small uh, grocery stores. There are 15 million of them in India and the immediately addressable market to create a chain for one of our investments. In fact, it's already been uh, sort of advertised. Uh, it's called Gully Network. Uh, so that is uh, about 20,000 stores easily addressing a $2 billion market. Uh, very interesting company. Uh, one in the field of gaming. So as I was indicating at the beginning of the session, uh, gaming has really taken off in India. So that's real money gaming. Um, so they're, they're just going bananas. Uh, one uh, you guys must, must have heard of in the fintech space, there was a company in the US called Brex, uh, which was uh, basically doing uh, uh, digital lending to startups and it shot into fame, became a unicorn pretty soon. So we've got a company which is uh, domiciled in Singapore, uh, started off business in India and it's going to take uh, you know, the business across Southeast Asia as well. Uh, and uh, so uh, yeah, it's a cross-border team between Taiwan, China, and India. It's a very interesting uh, business over there. And um, well, another marketplace actually, where um, consumers are actually selling and purchasing uh, probably goods and earning points or you know, the, the equivalent of tokens. Um, so you know, they're, they're basically, uh, it's a kind of a barter, barter marketplace. I think those models are very well, really worked very well in China. So we looked at some of those comparables and felt like investing in them. So quite a diverse, uh, uh, space really. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. So we now know that there are still investments uh, getting done uh, during COVID-19 and obviously we've got used to this new norm. Very, uh, I really, really, really want to thank you all of you for your um, time today. Before we close the session, I would like to know from each of you, especially the new people and the new speakers that uh, we have today, Christian, Anup, uh, and uh, Max, uh, what do you think about this format where we bring together investors, people from the blockchain industry and connect together uh, to find a synergy? Uh, what do you think about this? What's your take on this format? Um, 
if you want, I can go. Uh, first, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I just would like to uh, come back to what Christian and Anouk were saying about the uh, blockchain investment. Um, you know, in 2020, the blockchain investment didn't stop for enterprises. Uh, we triple our revenue this year. And uh, I think it's going to continue this way. So enterprises are quite bullish on uh, enterprise solutions for blockchain. And thank you very much for the um, for the opportunity. Very nice to meet Carl, uh, Leo, and Open Christians, and uh, very interesting talk. Thank you. And Congratulations, Max, on tripling your revenue. <laughs> yes. Um, you know what? It, I think one thing that we've learned in this uh, three or four month lockdown is our ability to continue innovating and growing. And what sort of the lockdown has done is it's allowing me to meet people from around the world. I look at the faces around this tape, uh, the screen here. This wouldn't normally happen. You know, normally it's jumping on a flight, flying to Poland, Italy, uh, India. I've done this back in February. Whereas I'm probably much more efficient by having uh, panels like this where I learn more about other people's companies, which is very important to me. And at the same time, uh, people learn a little bit more about what we can do so we can truly bring um, global innovation to a global investment platform. So Absolutely. thank you very much, Sunny. You're welcome, Christian. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Anup, I think you've been a regular speaker at our VCTV. And what, what do you, what, how's, how's been your journey so far? And what do you think? Well, it's a, my, I think it's a two-way um, uh, platform for me. Um, you know, I get to learn so many new things, uh, interacting with founders, uh, believe it or not, uh, it helps us, uh, get smarter. We weren't born smart. Uh, so when we listen to more and more people and we listen intently, ask questions, we continuously improving our knowledge without you, uh, sort of getting to know about it. <laughs> and then we, uh, appear smarter uh -huh. in the next one. So I think this is very, very useful to get to know about global innovative models, meet great founders and to be able to interact and exchange knowledge and of course get some uh, you know potentials for investments excellent thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, anu for that uh, uh, i would like to move to leo and john um, so i would like to know what's your experience been so far and what what's your take on this platform obviously we're going to have you more on this platform so yeah no, I want to go ahead and say uh, thank you so much, Sunny, for organizing this event. Um, the feedback from Christian and up uh, and Max are invaluable uh, from the, our standpoint. We wanted to come here to really present our project, uh, not so much pitch from a standpoint uh, from an investment community, but we want to go and share during this particular crisis is how do we continue um, creating job and value into the particular system. And so um, it's great that we got to meet uh, everybody and the feedback was uh, tremendously Invincible. So um, I look forward to future events such as this again. Yeah, for me, Excellent. Thank you. you. Nice to meet you, Leo. Thank you. For me, I thank you for your presentation. And if um, any of our uh, members of the panels give us advice, okay, how we're going to effectively, you know, uh, present or work together and maybe that we have an opportunity that we can collaborate. Uh, the idea, okay, and uh, go back to one of the projects that uh, presented by Carl. I'm very interested on that too because I am the also the developer investor for real estate in US. I've been in US for that uh, career for, for 30 years, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm working as a banker, mortgage banker, and also uh, property management. So the idea of Carl, I think that I'm gonna get back to you later on. And thank you. Okay, for your support. Awesome, thank you so much, both both of you, John and Leo. Carl, so this is our second time meeting virtually on an <laughs> event. What do you think about our event? <laughs> uh, I think it was really nice. I really enjoyed um, the like speaking about our venture and also getting the feedback and also the questions. Um, so I think overall it was uh, nicely put together and then. Um, I really enjoy it. So if possible, I would gladly join uh, another time as well. Um, there is one, uh, one question actually, which I want to uh, ask from Christian, but Anup can also uh, answer. Uh, Christian just mentioned that uh, uh, like being in these types of um, 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 networking uh, sessions uh, over, uh, over the internet makes uh, 
the life more efficient, but at the same time, and then you can meet more companies potentially, but at the same time, are you also uh, then um, convinced of making an investment based on uh, interaction in it over the internet, or you still then actually go there and meet the potential company where you're putting your money? Well, Very um, good question. Very good question. The, the, it's a fantastic question because An Anoop knows the company I'm, I'm talking about. Um, we made the decision to make the investment before. So I met them first in October. I worked with them three months over the internet. This is before COVID, right? So we were still doing Skype calls and Zoom calls beforehand. Information went back and forth. I went to meet them in India in February, literally for a two hour meeting, just to say hi. <laughs> and then the rest of the due diligence, the investments, the shareholding, the legal framework has all been done online. So to answer your question, yes. Um, the company in the Czech Republic and the two that we're talking to in Italy, never met them. As in, I've only ever met them over the phone. All right. Um, so to answer your question, yes, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And the more experience I get with more forums like this, I'm more likely to make an investment um, without having kicked the tires, as they say. Okay. Your thoughts? Yeah, so, um, uh, Kristen, I mean, I kind of agree with you. So, uh, I think initially, uh, when the pandemic started, uh, it was very difficult to find one's feet. Nobody knew how long it was going to last. So, everyone was guarded. Everyone was, uh, you know, sort of participating in something without needing to put themselves into uh, a business as usual shoes. But I think this, is, this has become business as usual, right? Yeah. So if we ain't going to do business uh, on this, then how are we going to do business at all, mm -hmm. right? And we are in the business of raising as well as deploying money. Otherwise, it's no point. And the IRRs are not going to come for our uh, LPs and our investors as well. Uh, so just as you are raising, uh, we are interested in deploying. So we made um, you know, two investments, which are completely uh, via Zoom calls. I think it is the uh, trust and the confidence that the founders are able to inspire. So all of us have to, I guess, adapt ourselves to how we appear on, on such video conferencing. Yeah, how seriously do we take it, right? Mm -hmm. And every, each and every aspect of how we address, how's, the, how's our body language, uh, you know, with how are we presenting? Everything really sort of comes to that little two-inch screen in front of you uh, because that's the window that you're getting in that Zoom call with five people logging on uh, to make sure that you have a hit. Uh, and the idea is to drive interest. And certainly for, uh, you know, online businesses, which can be, uh, uh, you know, sort of, uh, 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 we can do due diligence uh, further without having to take, take a flight. I think those decisions can be faster. Can I just add one more thing? Sorry. Um, when you get a moment, there was a doctor called Spencer Johnson wrote a book and it's a very thin book. It's very easy to read and it's called Who Moved My Cheese? So I'm, I'm seeing Anoop smiling at the moment. And, and that book was before the pandemic, before the, the internet almost. And it's all about change. What do you do when life throws you a curveball? when something changes. And certainly if, if the audience and the panel, if you have not read that book, certainly get a copy of it um, and read it. It's, it'll be in half an hour of your time that you will you know, thank me for later on. It's been a great book and I've, I've read it probably every two years because each two years I get something different out of that book. So have right. a look at that. Okay, sure, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, thank you, all of you. Thank you, all the speakers. It was a well, great session today, great panel. And please, you. please, if you don't, if you miss the name of the book, please, you can just go and ask Christian about it later. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, uh, thank you. Okay, welcome. So that brings us to the end of the session. Um, I would like to pass the floor to my co-moderator, Nadia. She's going to give uh, us a road uh, map of the next of, next of the sessions, the forthcoming sessions that we have on the VCTV for you to uh, tune in um, uh, later today and next week. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sonny. So we welcome you as all the participants uh, today, both entrepreneurs and uh, serial entrepreneurs and investors to join our different formats. We have keynotes, uh, masterclasses, fireside chats, 
and uh, you can also address that uh, with some of the topics uh, for our audiences. For instance, um, um, just today we have uh, head of deposits and investment sector of Eurobank, Yonis uh, Roussos, presenting the topic EU concerns for crypto and stable coins, how to tackle them. And today I'm also running Startup Leaders Club. It's a brainstorming panel discussion between serial entrepreneurs and co-moderating investors. You can also join this format. Uh, today we'll be discussing the business model pivots in the era of pandemic series 10. And afterwards for investors, where you can also find your co-investment peers, panel discussion on investments and pivots during pandemic marketplace and food tech. So we have different industry specialized topics, as well as keynotes and masterclasses. So welcome to all these formats. You can also suggest yours and we'll be happy to accommodate that in our agenda. Thank you so much and all the best for the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. So uh, have a great uh, day, great evening and stay safe and let's catch up soon after this. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.